Shalom Chavrin. Yeah, it's good to get to talk to you guys again. Listen, uh, one thing I really want to kind of share with you as we have been endeavoring on the Vatican series here, we are about to release part three. Should be out by this weekend. Uh, tonight's video is a little different, a little off the subject there. Uh, just an interesting revelation the Lord gave me here. A little while back it started. He uh, compounded that revelation just the other day, so I wanted to share that with you tonight. I uh, also want to mention to you, though, something that is of a grave concern of mine. I am hearing daily reports of the anti-Semitism that is rising against the Jewish people, against Israel, around the world. Uh, it seems no end uh, to the, uh, the church movement, the Christians of today, that have turned against God's anointed or God's chosen people. Um, I heard a statement recently that 90% of the Jews of today are not even of the seed of, um, of the original Jews that were back in Israel originally. And uh, although I realize that just like in Christianity, not everyone that claims to be Jewish by birth that are Jews will be there. I mean, it is part of our history. We can see that when God called Moses and led the children of Israel out of Egypt, uh, many of them perished along the way because of unbelief. And it was the children that, that inherited the land. Many times in our past, the righteous have suffered with the wicked. Uh, when Elijah was here, uh, he thought he was the only one left, but God said, I have reserved 7,000 that have not bowed the knee to Baal. Uh, so there's always a remnant according to the election which God has foreknown who would believe him and who would not. Uh, so I, I do realize that though the, our brothers and sisters that have returned home according to the promise of God, I, I realize that not every one of them are, are going to be uh, to believe that Mashiach truly is the Messiah when, when it, this is revealed. Uh, but none, nonetheless, uh, there is no way I could make a stand to say that 90% of the Jews in Israel today are not Jews. That is completely erroneous. And, of course, we'll go into that. Hopefully, uh, I'm supposed to be on BP Watch uh, on Wednesday. Uh, uh, gosh, I'll see if I can't. Uh, I'm sure Sister Tatum has posted that on our Facebook page. If not, I'm sure she will once she sees this video here. Uh, so uh, hopefully we'll get to address that subject as well with Brother Jesse, who is who does this uh, particular ministry. And uh, I don't know what all we're going to get to talk about. I uh, didn't know much about this, Brother, uh, to start with. But uh, trust that God will, will give us a wonderful time and we'll be able to share things uh, with, between one another about God's uh, great plan for the, for the time we're living in and, and the prophecy of, of this time. Um, anyway, let's get right into this. Uh, I want to take you to Hosea. Hosea is the prophet of God, and he is also listed in the uh, Navim, or the prophets of the Torah, or the Tanakh. And um, I know you guys, some of you have heard me talk about this before, so it'll be a little bit new to you. It won't be new to you, but the depth of it that I'm going to take, well, I say depth, it's probably only be about 10 minutes we'll get into this. So, but let me just share this with you again. In Hosea chapter 8, going to verse 7, God says to, he's speaking to Israel, for they sow wind and they will reap a tempest. Now, the King James Version says, for they have sown the wind and they shall reap the whirlwind. Uh, I'll just read from there and then I'll read a little bit from the Tanakh. Um, it hath no stalk, the bud shall yield no meal. If so, be it yield, the stranger shall swallow it up. Israel is swallowed up. Now shall they be among the Gentiles as a vessel wherein is no pleasure. For they are gone up to Assyria, a wild ass alone by himself. Ephraim hath hired lovers. Yea, though they have hired among the nations, now will I gather them, and they shall sorrow a little for the burden of the king of princes. Um, now, the last verse I read there, verse 10, let me just read this to you. Um, this is from the Jewish Tanakh. Although they pay tribute to the nations, now will gather them. But first they will be humbled somewhat by the burden. Now they translate this, the king of the officers. In Hebrew, it literally says, Me'at mima, melech sarim. Sarim, the word sar 
in Hebrew is prince. Sarim is princes. So it's Melech Sarim, which means the king of the princes. Now, one reason why they might transfer, translate this as officers because it is considered sometimes that officers in combat are considered to be princes. But actually, we do realize who this is. He's talking about the Messiah. Uh, when the, the scripture reads here, Yea, they have hired among the nations, now will I gather them, and they shall sorrow a little for the burden of the king of princes. Uh, and this is exactly what happened to Israel. Uh, they would sorrow a little for the burden of the king of princes. In other words, they um, are, my forefathers crucified him and are, get, delivered him up to the Romans and the Romans had him crucified. And so therefore it has brought a, a sorrow for our nation for, for a period of time. And my Jewish brothers that listen to this, keep, rem, I keep reminding you this, I'll say it again. We didn't get scattered in 70 AD for no reason. So now you have to tell me then what, what, what was the sin. I can take you in the book of Daniel according to his prophecy and I can show you exactly when Moshiach was to come to Israel. Now, you can try to figure out the 69 weeks yourself and try to determine are they years, months, whatever the case may be, but from Daniel's prophecy, and we know that in Nehemiah, there were three decrees. You had Cyrus, Darius, and Nehemiah that gave those decrees. And only the decree that fit for the rebuilding of the walls and the city of Jerusalem as well was Nehemiah's prophecy. Cyrus and Darius, it was building of the temple. Uh, so that puts us, if you take each, each day as a year, it put us right at the time that Mashiach came. And of course, as we know, Daniel also said that he would be cut off not for himself, but for the, um, for the sake of... Uh, for well, for the sake of us, for our own people, for, for not only us, but also for the Gentiles as well. Um, anyway, and as it says, yea, though they have hired among the nations. Okay. Anyway, so let's, let's, let's go back to and look right here, though, because it actually gives a prophecy what we would do. For they have sown the wind, and they shall reap the whirlwind. Now, for those of you that do not know and that have never heard me speak about this before, um, in the Hebrew tongue there, let me just take this here, that's chapter 7, so we want Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, Hei, Vav, Zayin, okay, Ki Ruach, Yazerah, okay, for the spirit, uh, they have seeded, which is to bury or to plant, They're, you're planting, um, so it's the spirit that got planted, now the Ruach in Hebrew is the same word used for spirit as well as wind, and he says there that they, that, they, that they buried, he said, if you bury, for they have sown the wind, you have buried the wind, they shall reap the whirlwind. See, koma ein lo samach, bali yaasa koma ulai yaasa azarim, yabala belechu. Inside of Yeshua, was the spirit it was the ruach hakadosh of the living god living inside of him he claimed yeshua himself claimed to be what he claimed to be the tree of life he says i am what the way and the life and the truth the way in other words the way to get back to the tree of life was through him he said he was the life the chayim see so I uh, am the way, Vegam Chaim, Vegam Emet. This is what he claimed to be. And we know in the Garden of Eden that Hashem breathed on the nostrils of Adam, Nishmar uh, Chaim. He breathed in his nose the breath of Chaim, which is the very life of Hashem going into uh, Adam and Eve. That was God's spirit, the tree of life. It was, the tree of life was only what, was, what would this was called. This was not some tree you pick off fruit from. This was God himself being able to, and he in his spirit, the Chaim was the fruit of this tree, of Es Chaim. It was Chaim was that fruit, which was Hashem's own life. Now he put that life in order to bring back redemption in Yeshua. 
and Yeshua came, and what did we try to do but bury him? And as a result, he promised that we would reap a whirlwind. You know, in, in the Tanakh, we read the same thing, or the Torah, excuse me, the Tanakh. Uh, it's not in the law, it's in the prophets and the Novim. For they shall sow the wind, they will reap a tempest. Okay? That's exactly what's happened to our people. And it's obvious what happens because not only does it speak about sowing the wind, we we'll reap a whirlwind. It comes down to verse 10 and he says, uh, And they shall sorrow a little for the burden of the king of princes. Because does not the scripture say that he would be a burden, of, you know, that, that we would stumble at that stone? So, at, at any rate, um, very sad. And, and of course, look at verse 8. Israel is swallowed up. Now shall they be among the Gentiles as a vessel wherein is no pleasure. And that's exactly what's happened to our people. Even till now, the, the, the Gentiles despise the Jewish people. We're, we're still, all of Israel has not come home. 